Hi everyone, welcome back to Quick Compositions. We were just talking, I'm boy, I'm doing a lot of these things and pretty quickly here. <laughs> so anyway, let's get into this. This is another one of our little quick compositions, little rose practice. Just watch these and, you know, get some ideas and try some different things. And uh, again, it's an eight by 10 board and I painted it a medium white. I got some pencil marks in here I wanna cover up. So I'm gonna put some color onto that. Uh, it's been given a coat of medium white to begin with, which is you basically you can buy medium white or you can just use white and a little yellow oxide and a little bit of black. But most of that is, is going to cover up here because i got to cover it up this time. Three quarter inch brush is what I use. My heritage paints, um, you know, taken a little bit global. And but, you know, we paint so fast you could do this acrylic, too, because we, we set our goal for like 30 minutes and. And then I'll use a number 10 for most of my uh, roses and stuff I go here. But again, like I say, I like to, to play and try some different colors. And, um, you know, I haven't used the thalo blue into the background here at all this week. <laughs> so I think I'm going to head towards that way just a bit. Uh, let's take a look at it. Let's first lighten it up with some white here. So thalo blue and the light. And some of you want to, I mean, not thalo blue, but ultramarine blue. Excuse me. I'm using ultramarine blue. So many of you have really liked the backgrounds that I've done uh, with some of these blues and stuff in there uh, lately. And uh, so, you know, and, and they're selling very, very well. So I think I'll do another one. So I'm just going to put some blue out here like this. This is ultramarine blue and white. And we move our, we're going to vignette it. So we'll move our, our, our brush out in all different kinds of ways. We'll leave it kind of like that, letting some of that just fade away like that. We'll vignette the painting here. Let's put in a streak or two of a little bit more of a blue right up there, just so that blue has more than more of an interest to it there. We'll just streak a little bit more color into it there. It's a nice vignetting of that. Let's get some of our greens. We'll toss some green right down into this. Some ultramarine blue and some green. Now, ultramarine blue is a beautiful blue, but it, it mixes up. Uh, it's not nearly as powerful. Some of you have been following me along and painted simply. You'll notice it takes a lot more ultramarine blue to make some of these deeper greens than it does the uh, the thalo blue. And so it's a, a real kind of a weak painting green. So you see the 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 popularity of some of the ultra of the thalo blue in the mixes. So I use some that uh, that makes a little cooler green. Let's add a little bit more of a a pine green there, and that makes a little bit of a warmer green that puts in some nice green motion here that this is will be for like leaves we'll take some of this maybe right out to the side here like this We've got some you know some nice movement here for leaves and we'll thin this out and just create some motion and some movement here into the painting with your hand you could also use a paper towel let's put a uh, rose up here so it's going to interact one of the things i like to do is interact if i have that blue up here i like that rose to interact with that blue so i'm going to wipe back this time here I don't always do this. This is just one of the things I've done. I've, I've done it a lot today, so I think I'll continue doing it. And I'll put one there. It allows me to kind of draw in where I might want to have roses or something like that. Let's put a rosebud right up there. And then let's drop another uh, maybe a medium-sized juvenile rose right down here onto that. So we'll, we'll grow off that way here. And uh, um, let's take and let's get... Uh, Make sure we have some of our nice heavy greens, blue greens up onto this side. Maybe even drag it right into that side of the rose there. That'll be pretty good there. And a little bit of cool color that'll appear up underneath the shadow side of that rose there. And the shadow side there. So I've got to set the cool color down onto the sides and uh, there, that nice blue green cool color. Of the, uh, it's not actually cool, you know. I mean, we we always call ultramarine blue as a cool because it's blue, and on the spectrum, the blues look a little bit cooler. But in uh, a photo spectrometer that actually does the temperature variance for us in in the factory and stuff, it and and it does this for all the pigment blue twenty nine is a warm pigment. Ultramarine blue is warm. It's just not as warm as the yellow oxide or burnt sienna or naphtha or red light that I'm using in the painting as well. And so it will always appear cool, okay? But in actuality, it's just a little bit warm of that cool. So, you know, you can find other cooler. You can make it cooler. Add a little red violet to it and get a really beautiful cooler blue, okay? And that's just something to remember. Now, so I'm going to go over here to my... To my tan, I'm going to take some burnt sienna right down here with some of that pine green. That's a nice warm color. This will help me establish. Just pull through like this. To I like to push these into the stems here and get some stem movements down 
into my painting here of flowers and stems coming off like that. I just like to always set those up in there. And I always like to take a little bit of that burnt sienna. Sometimes I'll add a little red to it and stuff, but maybe give a, a little triangle shape here coming off of these stems for like a, uh, you know, a little, um, and that those two are even there. So let's just get rid of that. But it uh, gives it, makes it look like a little thorn. And I like those little, little, jaggy little thorns. It's just a little visual interest and stuff there to those. And I do those just real quick like that, okay? So now let's uh, let's come in here. So we have the blues. You know, it would be beautiful to paint some, maybe a soft yellow-gray uh, flower here with the blues interacting with the blues and stuff. So let's get some of our... Let's get some of our yellow down here. Let's get some of our blues and our burnt siennas together. Those are just really beautiful painting grays. And let's make ourselves a nice gray color, okay, here. And let's lean it towards the yellow here to this side. And we'll push some of that into the rose for right now, into the area that we're going to paint that rose. And we'll let those colors just kind of come together and work right into that blue, soften those colors around. That's where we're going to be painting the rose, one rose. Let's change the tone up a bit here. Maybe a bit more blue here. So just a little softer. So this rose up here, change the tone up. Don't always paint all the roses the same tone. All of these colors will go together because they're all made from the same, from the same. As a matter of fact, let's just turn that rose, that, that petal of that one just a bit. Since that looks kind of like it's going to be turning there. So we'll turn it. And uh, let's come down here and let's put a little bit of that blue and gray into this one as well here. So we'll open this rose up and that'll be the colors that'll go into that rose and you can check that. And sometimes I'll take those colors and I'll toss them into a few other areas like maybe there's a, you know, another little background flower or something. I just paint for movement, you know, and that's what I do a lot of times in my paintings now. And you know, people I, is I'll take color and I'll push it around and I'll let the viewer's imagination see something out of that, you know. And that takes a tremendous amount of confidence just to go out there and push stuff around. And all I'm saying to myself is I need to move that color around the painting. And it takes a tremendous amount of confidence just to grab something and push it in there and then leave it alone and let the viewer do it. But I found when I do that, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people like it, okay. Not everybody, but a lot of people like it. So let's come in and let's pick out some of our cool, our red violet, which I love to paint into the centers of roses. Sometimes a little bit of naphthol red light just warms that up and makes a real pretty one as well. And sometimes into, into the roses, I'll do everything with like a burnt sienna too. So let's take a little burnt sienna. I'll model those all together because I want these, these roses to change here. And I'm just going to model through some of this color into here. And into the shadow side, which will be darker and cooler over here. And into the center of that rose. And see how very casual. A rose has the three parts, which we talk about. And we, we show and we paint and all these others. A rose has three parts to it. The center, the, ba the bowl, and then the outside reaching petals. And that's all I'm trying to do. So I want my reaching petals to go in and out. I want my bowl here to round like that. So it's going to round. And this little guy here to spin out of that center. And so if you do that, you start to set up the motion of the rose to begin with. Now this will be a little different back here as I'm going to make this rose turned here. So the actual center of that rose is back up here, kind of turned back this way. And we won't see it really, but we'll put a little bit of this shadowy tone down here to the low side, maybe where some back petals would fall down there. We might even just push a couple out here like that's falling down petals there like that. We just, we're painting impressionistically here. We're not painting perfect or stroke flowers. We're painting impressionistic. So we'll let that just become impressionistic there. Like maybe that's petals falling down there. Pulling out, you know, curving here for the bowl, pulling out for these other parts over here. Let's come down to the bottom here. More of a juvenile rose, so it opens up a little bit, but it's not completely open. And let's uh, put some shadow side to it. Let's get a little bit of that warmer sienna up here. Just kind of model that around. Most important is give it that throat. Give it that, see the bowl shadow down there. Those are the two most important parts of it because that makes it the rose. And then in and out motion here for the growing or reaching petals. The... the uh, 
Some people call it the teacup and saucer. It's kind of cutesy, but it works. It gives you the idea of it. But I like to call them the reaching pedals and the center pedals and the bull pedals. So these are center pedals, small little, little, small little motions of your brush, slightly turned like that, and you're just painting for motion. I'm not painting pedals, I'm just painting for motion. Now, so that sets that all up there like that. Let's come back into here. Let's grab some of our white. Let's come down into this area here. We'll take some of that nice, beautiful blue down into that. Makes a nice, softer gray color. So now we have all of this kind of warm, dirtier color here. We'll cool it down here. We'll give it some of this blue. We'll cool some of that down. And we'll start actually physically painting the rose here, actually with a little cooler color here, which will push the warm colors right into the right into the rose and where I want to start is right in here and build some of that warm tone or build some of this light tone right up into and start that curving petals right in here like this of building that bowl building the motion there of that bowl we'll build some in and out motion here for the the petals here of the rose the reaching petals of the rose coming out here like that coming around here some soft petals back here. This is just this rose is just fading out. Little bits of it there, fading out. Let's go over and do the same. We'll change the tone just a little bit, maybe a bit more blue into that. Changes that that tone up just a bit, bit more gray here for this other one that's going to be turned back like that. And a few little side petals here. Not too much on that side. We'll let that shadow get in there but that just starts to build and see this is what I do as I move on here now change this tone up a bit let's add just a bit down into this other more juvenile rose not as big as the main rose here not as powerful which means it won't have as many petals and it won't be as much um, stuff going on so I've got to be careful how many strokes I actually give that in here I just use the corner here and suggest a little bit of movement there and uh, let's open up a few little petals here, pulling in here. So that, and what this does this time, what I'm looking at is just building my flowers a little bit, okay? So I'm just building them off of the background again. So let's come through. We'll pick up more white here, okay? And we'll build our flowers again here. We'll build these. We'll pick up some of this white. I'm just going to hit this nice opaque thick white right up there into the center i'll hit that let's hit it's hit right out here too these are the two outer edges of this rose here um, setting up the contrast of that one and the contrast of this one now you have two ways if i want to keep the shadow out i can pull out sometimes i'll take my brush into a little shadow and pull it out you know sometimes i will i will do this lighten up the pressure of the brush and pull down and that pulls this white further down into it, building the bowl that way. Or I wipe my brush and I lift off. It all depends on, do I want the rose lighter or do I want the rose darker? So I'm just going to lift off a little bit of this. Now my thinking is, I'll lift off, I'll create the motion, I'll leave that light edge there, just like that. That uh, gives me a nice light edge for that petal. And I, can, I now have a shadow again back in here that I can set another light edge of another rose in there. So... Let's leave that. Let's build another set of petals right up here like this. Put that color on, wipe off that excess like that and lift out a bit. So I'll leave a bit of the shadow coming off of that. Okay, and uh, let's come in and let's just build a little stroke right here, right like that. So maybe that's another little bit of the rose and we'll lift off some of that, maybe curve that just a bit. So it gives a little curve motion to the petal here we'll cup around inside smaller and again all I'm I'm not painting petals I'm painting motion I'm just want small little turns in here and I let the color kind of what we call incorporate together work together there and that's what creates the motion or the look of the petal and you know it's I'm not going in there and physically painting petals I'm physically painting movement that's what I'm doing Let's build a little bit more color right in here. A little bit heavier. Let's lift out just a touch. We can round that up just a bit more. But you can see it builds more color. You go through a lot of white when you paint like this, let me tell you. 
you know, but it's it's good painting. It's fun painting. Let's take a nice heavy stroke of white and let's put a nice heavy stroke of white right in there like that. Now, that is a nice textured heavy stroke of white that I'll just lift off a little bit of the edges here and get some of that motion out like that's coming right out to that that petal there. And I'm going to leave that like that. And that may be a little straight. So if that's a little straight, maybe I'll take it offline there just a bit. Or add a second little stroke, slightly different like that, and take off that excess. So you get some nice, you know, you see petals in there. That's the whole thing. And it doesn't take very much to make the nice movement. Now, maybe I want to lift off this just a little bit more. So I have the shadow up just a little higher here. And, you know, see that bowl. Get that bowl in there where you see that bowl right down in there like that. And let's just pick up some more paint and let's just strike another another layer of petals right here. Maybe coming right like that. And let's just pull that, that down just a bit. And then let's just lift off just a bit like this from the bottom of that bowl up like this. So we have that petal coming in there. Now you can finish this off with, you know, uh, more of this light petal here coming out like that. Uh, you know, pick up more of that paint and look at it physically got thick textured paint on that. Do you see that? I mean, that's that's that thick textured paint. Now, if you lose some of the edge, just, just lift some of that off there like that. Just lift some of that off and pull back out and leave just a little bit there of that color, you know, coming out. And you can lay out, you know, then you can come back and pull that off or lift off another little petal there. I'm just painting heavy, heavy textured roses here. Let's Let's texture out here a little bit more. Okay, so that's pretty good. And let's define up where that bowl is there. Just paint that bowl up into this one. Sometimes I'll put, put that light and just paint down and leave that light coming down like that and then lift off a little bit of that coming out like that. So you see that nice movement to that side of the rose. Now let's darken this down, cool this down, head towards our red violets and stuff here. As we head over here to the shadow side of the rose, we'll cool it off here. So the petals here actually become more pink. Maybe take a little bit of that pink around to this side here. Put up a little bit of pink side to it, a cool side to the rose. And this is what makes a pretty rose. I'm painting the warm yellowy white side and then the cooler pinker side here to the rose. And we'll strike a cooler reds and stuff here. Maybe just a bit of light there and pull out to leave just a bit of that light in there. Look at that petal, that rose. Maybe strike just a bit of our nice pink light here, right out there like that. And then just lift off a little bit. And that makes that nice transparent petal there. Let's just add a little bit of that light little edge of a petal and maybe pull down to the round that bowl or a little bit of a light stroke but you know take some of that off with this cooler red violet pink kind of color here maybe a stroke or two out here just a little movement and it makes a pretty little rose there pretty shape to the little rose let's put one right out here now this is the back side so you're seeing the bottom of the bowl here and I'll just lift off to, you know, and you can, you can really make nice petals just by striking the edges of the petals here, out like that. Maybe pull them down a little bit to start some of that motion down into the rows here. And then lift off to get some of that shadow coming back up the other way. And see, that makes a, a beautiful, you know, turning rose here. We'll put maybe a petal out here to out to this way here that's coming in this way and I just picked up a bit of texture there and wipe that and we'll just lift that off here maybe that rose is right there this this one here we'll just leave that just coming off to the back side there maybe you see a little bit of the back side there of one we'll put the calyx in there that'll help maybe put this edge of this rose up in front of that one so you see that, and that's all you need. Just to, even if you take off some of that paint, you see that is now sitting in front of it. 
So I look at that. And I just need a few little angled motions here to just give the feeling that this is, you know, a rose turning like that. It doesn't need very much. And that's the hardest thing, you know, when I first started painting those, I would like work on the structure and draw the pattern and try. And now that I fully understand the shape, I can paint it so casual there. And, you know, um, it, you know, I always tell myself, it, it only takes one person to really see it as a rose, you know, to, to, to buy it and stuff. But the thing is, is, is that the more casual I paint it, the more suggestive I paint it, the more people see it as a rose. The stiffer you paint it, the more precise you try to get to those petals, then you run yourself into having to get the structure absolutely correct. But if you're painting everything relaxed and casual, you don't have to get it all exactly correct because it's just loose and movement and they see some petal edges and then the viewer's eye will justify it. That's the difference, you know. And that's what impressionistic painters are saying, you know. So it, it, it's really a great way to paint. So I'll put some light on there. And all I know is I've got to just, my motions of my brush here have to just round. I'm painting for movement. My motions have to turn here, turn tight into here. My motions got to paint a bowl out here like this. And then when I come to the outside, I have to paint the outside. I have to pull, sometimes that pulls in, sometimes that, I, I lift out to a shadow here. I'll put a little lighter petal right out here. Let that come right here like that. Now I can pull that in or I can lift that out like this and preserve some of my shadow, which gives me room to put in another layer of petals if I want because I'm painting on shadow. I can take some of my, my reds there and, and restate my bowl. Pull my bowl color out there again. Maybe set just a another line of petals right like that and lift off just a bit just so you see some nice movement you don't have to make perfect stuff just so you get some of that nice movement there let's lift some of that off it paints them very very suggestive very very uh, casual and I paint them all different kinds of ways but to paint them casual like that has taken me the longest because I don't paint them precise. And, you know, it used to be I put on patterns and painted precise, I felt more comfortable. Now I feel great with them. I mean, I can do them um, because I, I paint them more suggestively more than anything else. But that takes a lot of practice. Let's go in and let's, let's redefine that stem right up here into this bottom calyx of this rose. We'll put some greenery in there. A little bit of our pine green and stuff like that into that rose to suggest that we might even make a lighter green here. Let's make a take a little Hansa yellow and some pine green. A little bit more Hansa yellow than that, Dave. Maybe a bit of white, maybe even a bit of our bluish kind of tone in there. Gives it nice. And let's just put a you know a couple of green light strokes in there that will be suggestive of a of a calyx. You know, here into the painting. There, that right there, that's pretty good. And uh, we might streak a little bit of that green out here before we build some leaves. We'll, we'll, we'll streak some of that tone out there. Let's in a little, little blue into that green and streak some of that tone. Let's streak a little lighter greens out here just to break up that carries that lighter green out through there. See, I'm just looking at where's my green going, carrying my green. I used it up there because I needed to get it into a calyx there, which we can soften that out just a bit. We just need movement up there. And then they'll see that as the septals and the calyx of the of the uh, the rose. If I don't paint it too much, their eye will suggestively see that in there now, see? If I don't paint it too much, if I go in there and try to be too specific, then I've got to go in and very and paint it very specific. Does that make sense? Okay, if I go in there and paint it very suggestively, then I can leave it as a suggestion, and I don't have to go in there and work on that too much. Okay, so let's continue on here. Let's. Uh, I'm going to drop into the more powerful of the blues, the thalo blue into this. Gives you a nice deep, maybe a bit of my red violet into that. Nice, just nice deep blue green cool color. And I can use that right up here. Look at that powerful, cool blue-green right in there, 
right into that center of interest here and the contrast that that provides. I can negative paint up onto these rose petals here a bit like that. Um, let's, let's, let's concentrate a little bit of that and get a little bit of this negative painting out here and uh, shape up just a bit. Let some of that just go out to the outside there like that. Let's push some of that in there and out like that. Just pretty and fun and trying some different things. Nice little blue green here and try and push some of that out there like that. Just gives you another little green. Then we can come in with some of our lighter green. We can add, uh, let's add some Hansi yellow to that phthalo like that. That's really pretty. Just a nice yellow green color. And we can push some of that in as lighter green leaves, lighter green touches over to this side. You know, let, let's come right into here and let's push a little more yellow, or excuse me, a little bit of that rose color right into here like this. And just get very suggestive right in there like that. And uh, a little bit of our red, violet, red. Let's just, and what is it that really gives you the idea of the rose, that center? In a bowl. The second you put those on, your eye, the viewer will start to see like, oh, that's that's a rose kind of getting hidden back there. Just like that. So that's just kind of pretty. Then what we'll do is uh, put a little light green right over it. So it's sitting, just some strokes there. It's sitting there back behind things. Let's get a little more lighter yellow green here. Little different colors, little different thing going on here. You know, it's a different day, different roses, fun. Practices your, uh, some of your colors, some of your techniques. You know, let's just lay on some really nice yellow, bright yellow green here. Just lay that on to some of these, like you have some nice brights. Some people, you know, not everybody, but some people really like a brighter yellow green in their painting. So, you know, this painting will probably appeal to them. My job is to paint it all. I always tell my students, I don't paint what I like. I paint what sells. And so if I want to have a, a, a large volume of customers, I got to paint all the colors and all the tones. That's what I do. I enjoy painting. I enjoy the process of creating. You know, I don't always paint with colors I like. I paint with with uh, all different types of colors to appeal to a wide variety of, of buyers, potential customers, and and uh, my you know my family. Shoot, my family has a wide variety of likes and and that they things that they like and don't like. Let's just get a little bit of that blue and green and shape up that back edge just a bit more right there like that. See how that just negative paints that back edge of that rose there and causes quite a bit of interest. And so up into here, we'll just tap some of these greens and this movement out through here. And just get some of that, that green movement, some lights and some darks and some movements there to create that, um, that movement. I like when I have that spot of red there and that comes up for there. I really like that spot of red over there. I might restate some of that. Just take some of my red violet and a little bit of my red. I might restate because I really do like that. I might restate some of that right over here on this side of this rose. Just pull that out and let's get a little bit of that uh, with that red, violet, and red. Let's get a little bit of that red right in there like that. That little spot of it there. Just like that. And let's just pull this light color and stuff over that just a bit here and there. And create some of that red movement within that rose. Here, pulling out like that. See, I like that. It's different. And let's just get a little bit of that right out here, more in the tip. Maybe pull in so it gets a little bit deeper color right there. Just different. Here, that looks kind of pretty. And you can put a little light to soften it. You can also just pull that green in there like that. And pull this back like that and that green comes in that gives you a nice transparent edge back there on that rose or you can pick up a little bit on the chisel like this and, and bring that edge of that rose back up 
uh, a little bit more precise out here if you want to see the edge a little bit more so there's all kinds of ways but that gives you a beautiful rose so I like that little bit of red showing up there let's just pop just a bit of that red right down in that again and just lift that up and move that out just a bit get, get some of that movement in there of that color it's really kind of pretty like that just like that so you get you know some more ideas let's put just a little bit more right back down in here and then we'll get out of here that'll be enough for this painting that's enough for the painting that gives you a nice little movement of color and stuff like that okay hope you enjoyed it another quick little composition there you put that together take a look at it into a frame see if you like it that might even look nice into a, a gold frame or something like that too so there's all kinds of stuff but it makes a nice little composition there okay Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on some of those other videos. And as always, if you have questions or something like that, join us out onto the social networks. And, and you can always write to us at our studio at jansenartstudio.com. And uh, we'll be happy. We don't always get to you right away, but we'll be happy to try to get you those answers. Okay? Thanks a lot. See you on the other videos.